This story took place in May 2010 in Costa Mesa, California. Parents Sam, Stephen, and Raquel Hare became worried after several days of silence from their son. Sam was supposed to come visit his family for the weekend, but he never showed up. Stephen and Raquel went to his apartment to check if everything was okay. A terrible picture awaited them there. The panicked father immediately called the rescue service. In the call, Stephen reported that they found the body of a girl in their son's bedroom. A terrible picture awaited the detectives in the room. The white bed linen was thoroughly soaked in blood. The victim was kneeling at the edge of the bed with her pants pulled down to expose her lower body. Forensic experts came to the conclusion that the girl was subjected to violence. The cause of death was a gunshot wound to the back of the head. In the kitchen, police found her bag, which contained her driver's license. The victim was identified as 23-year-old Julie Kibuishi. Julie Kibuishi was born on February 14, 1987. From early childhood, the girl showed great interest in dancing and music, and this passion only grew every year. She respected her Japanese roots and culture, but considered herself American, having been born in the United States. After graduating from art school, Julie began studying design at the Orange County School of the Arts. There she met 26-year-old Sam Hare. She helped him with his studies, not yet knowing that her kindness would cost her life. Sam Hare was born on May 29, 1983 in Los Angeles. He was the only child in the family and was very close to his parents. Friends described him as a big, kind teddy bear. As a young man, he enlisted in the United States Army. After serving for several years, Sam returned home to Southern California. He planned to finish his studies and then return to the Army as an officer. It was for this purpose that Sam entered Orange County School, where he became friends with Julie, who was three years younger than him. On the evening of May 21, he wrote to the girl that he was going to help a friend and then visit his parents. However, after a while, his plans changed, and he sent a message to Julie, in which he asked her to come to his house, saying that he was in trouble and needed help. As a good friend, Julie, of course, agreed to meet, writing so that he would not worry. It looked as if he had deliberately lured her home and committed a terrible crime. His car and documents were also missing. Authorities put Sam on the federal wanted list. Costa Forest Police have begun tracking the suspect's mobile phone and credit cards in an attempt to get on his trail. Detectives received information that on the day Sam suddenly disappeared, cash was withdrawn from his credit card four times at the same ATM. His card was also used to pay for an order at a pizzeria about 20 miles from his own apartment. When police were sent the ATM footage, officers expected to see Sam in the footage, but it showed a teenager in a baseball cap and sweatshirt withdrawing money from the suspect's bank account. Maybe the police nor Sam's parents were able to identify the young stranger. Investigators concluded that he most likely helped the criminal escape or hide from authorities. On May 26, 2010, police received information that Sam's credit card had once again been used to pay for food delivery at a pizzeria. They received the address where the courier would make the delivery and officers headed there to apprehend Sam. When police burst into the house, they found a 17-year-old boy and several of his underage friends. The teenager told a story investigators didn't expect to hear. The guy was given a credit card with full instructions for withdrawing cash. However, it was not Sam who did this. Daniel Wozniak, an actor whom the teenager met at a local theater, gave him a credit card, explaining that he needed to collect money that Sam owed him. In total, he withdrew $900 from the account. The name Daniel Wozniak served as a wake-up call for investigators, as they found an invitation to his wedding in Sam's apartment. The police had to find out who Wozniak was and how he was connected to Sam. Daniel Wozniak was born on March 23, 1984, in Los Angeles. He always loved to be the center of attention, and realizing that he had a natural talent for the performing arts, he began singing in musicals. Daniel was rather careless about his plans for the future and lived one day at a time, often changing jobs, which is why he constantly had financial difficulties and was deeply in debt. Having tried himself in different areas of work, he returned to work in the theater. It was at the theater that he met fellow actress Rachel Buffett, and soon the couple decided to get married. On May 26, 2010, when law enforcement officers descended on Wozniak, 
He was enjoying his bachelor party in a luxurious rented house. Officers burst into the party and arrested him. The man claimed that his only crime was participating in his friend Sam's credit card fraud. He further said that before they could carry out their plan to cash out the funds, Sam made a shocking confession to the murder of Julie. Wozniak added that after such a confession, his friend dropped him off near the shopping center and never saw him again. Detectives believed that he was covering for Sam and was also involved in the girl's murder. Investigators decided to try a different interrogation strategy. Forensic scientists took a DNA sample from Daniel, which made him very nervous. Almost immediately, he began adding more and more details to his story. After a long pause in the interrogation room, he said that he knew about Julie's murder from the very beginning and helped his friend escape. When detectives reminded that they had his DNA, he assured that it would not be found on Julie's body. Wozniak continued to insist that he had nothing to do with the murder. Investigators decided to increase pressure on Daniel and reported that he would be arrested for complicity in murder. Wozniak admitted that he was standing over the girl's body when Sam shot her twice in the back of the head. At that time, police did not yet know that there were two shots. And only a few hours after Wozniak's words, forensic experts concluded that there were indeed two shots. But only one head wound was recorded at the crime scene. This confession meant that Daniel was definitely in the apartment at the time of the murder. This automatically made him an accomplice to the crime, and now investigators could legally detain him. Wozniak refused further testimony and never admitted where Sam might be. While detectives were looking for clues, Daniel, who was behind bars, called his fiance Rachel Buffett, not knowing that the phone calls were being monitored. He began to discuss with her the situation in which he found himself. During the conversation, it became clear that Rachel Buffett was also involved in a crime, and soon she decided to confess everything to the police because she was worried that she would also end up behind bars. Wozniak realized that he had to talk to the detectives before Rachel did. He panicked, desperate to make a deal with the authorities that he had abandoned just hours earlier. What he told the detectives this time shocked them. On the fateful day of May 21, Daniel Wozniak asked his good friend Sam to move several heavy boxes into the attic of a theater building that was undergoing renovations. While Sam was busy moving boxes into the attic and had his back to Wozniak, he pulled out a gun and shot Sam in the head. The bullet passed tangentially. Sam turned around and realized that he had been shot. Sam began to beg his friend not to do this, but without the slightest hesitation, this ruthless criminal fired again, killing Sam instantly. After that, he took his phone, from which he wrote Julie. Wozniak left Sam's body in the attic and went to perform at his local theater and musical production. He later came to Sam's apartment, and as soon as Julie arrived, he forced her into the bedroom and shot her twice in the head. Daniel then staged the crime scene to make it appear that Julie had been sexually assaulted. Next, Wozniak decided to make sure that no one could find Sam's body. He returned to the attic and dismembered it in an attempt to hide the identity of the deceased and later buried it in an abandoned park. After all he had done, Daniel returned to the theater. Daniel had always had financial problems and was behind on his apartment rent at the time of the murders. He was on the verge of eviction and deeply in debt, but at the same time he wanted to have a luxurious wedding and honeymoon. Daniel learned that Sam had $62,000 in savings from his combat pay and then planned the cold-blooded murder of two innocent people in order to stage a grand wedding. Police later found a duffel bag containing evidence against Wozniak. This bag was filled with incriminating evidence such as documents, bank cards, Sam's bloody clothes, spent shell casings, and the murder weapon. DNA and fingerprints were on all the items and indicated that he had committed a double murder. During the investigation, Wozniak led officers to the area where Sam's nearly dismembered body was found dumped at the El Dorado Nature Center in Long Beach. After more than five years of legal proceedings, Daniel Wozniak was tried and found guilty of two counts of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to death. September 16, 2016 Before the governor of California declared a moratorium on the death penalty in the state, detectives several years later proved that the criminal's ex fiancee Rachel Buffett not only knew about Daniel's plans to kill Sam, but also deliberately muscled the detectives. 
She was arrested and charged with complicity in a crime and was sentenced to three years in prison in 2018, but was released in 2019 for good behavior. The lives of two innocent people were taken. The lives of relatives are destroyed forever. And all this so that one maniac can have the honeymoon of his dreams.